Today I'm going to talk to you how I keep all my shipping supplies organized and to try to help others who are just getting started in selling, whether it be selling um, fulfilled by merchant on Amazon or if they're selling on eBay or Mercari or Poshmark. Just little tips and tricks for you. And for starters, this is my box of boxes. And so anytime I get a box, I break it down. If you don't break it down, you'll be sorry because if you do a lot of shopping, like me, I do a lot of shopping and selling. Your boxes are going to build up very quickly to the point where you're going to want to give all your boxes away. There's just way too many. So the way this is organized here is my first box has small boxes, but they're actually square boxes. They're square, small boxes. And the second box is actually small rectangular boxes because most boxes aren't square. They're usually rectangular. So these are small to medium sized rectangular boxes. Um, and it's easy to tell if you need a particular box, you know your size item, you'll just come to your box of boxes and you will just quickly know the dimensions you need. And you can pretty much find one quickly as long as you keep them in their uh, categories like I have them. These are small squares. Um, these are small to medium rectangles. Then we got a, a little bit bigger rectangular boxes here. There's probably over 45 boxes just in this box alone. And then all of these boxes back here are large rectangular boxes. So I know it's hard to tell, but so this is how I keep all my boxes. I'll step back so you can kind of see. It doesn't really look like much, but there's probably a good 100 plus boxes inside of those boxes. Here are two more items I keep on hand up here. I always have a roll of bubble wrap, which this is a small bubble wrap, but you can order a bigger size. I usually get these from Uline, but you can also buy them on eBay or Amazon. And these are all the bubble wrap pieces that I get from packages that I purchase from. So always save your boxes and your bubble wrap because it will come in handy. These are some leftover peanuts. I don't really use them that often, but I do keep them on hand in case there comes that day where I'm going to use those peanuts. Right here, I have a gigantic bag. Let me step back so you can see. And by the way, I'm in my attic. That's where I keep a lot of these bigger shipping supplies. This whole giant lawn bag is full of packing paper. And I got this packing paper from other boxes that I've purchased items from. So I saved everything. And believe me, I go in this bag constantly and get shipping supplies. This bag right here grows and grows all the time because I put uh, air pillows in here. And I use air pillows all the time. I just shipped out a telescope the other day and I probably used about half the bag. But so, so far I have boxes, bubble wrap, um, what are these things called? Peanuts, packing paper, and air pillows. Okay, I don't know if you can see over here, but this whole bin right here is full of mostly priority mail boxes in different shapes. These items can be ordered online at USPS.com. They're for free. They'll be delivered to your house, and you can't go wrong with them. These are mainly boxes. I also use United States Postal Service um, poly mailers. Are, they're kind of like a fabric, but you can only use them for United States Postal Service. These cardboard boxes are boxes I had ordered from Uline at one time. And um, I'm sure I will eventually use them. I use all my shipping supplies all the time. So that's a bin of those. These bins right here are bins that are for items that I have for sale that are pre-owned items. And if you'll notice on these... Uh, boxes. I have them labeled. The bottom one says H&G, which is Home and Garden. This one says Women's Tops, but it's really WT number two. It means it's the second bin of one for Women's Tops. This bin on the bottom here says WB and MB, Women's Bottoms, Men's Bottoms. It means it could be anything from a skirt to a pair of shorts to a pair of pants. And then you have this bin, Electronic Accessories. This bin is fashion accessories. It could be anything like scarves, um, hats. Um, let's see, what else is a fashion accessory? Gloves, anything that's other than clothing. Um, down here, women's tops and men's tops. 
So as you know, we have a women's bottoms, men's bottoms, and a women's tops, men's tops. So um, over here to the left, we have an outerwear. That's usually anything, you know, for cold weather or anything like athletic. Right up top, we have women's shoes and men's shoes. I don't really sell a lot of shoes that often, but I know that shoes sell fast. If you're one of those sellers that sells uh, used shoes or new shoes, you probably um, have a bin for shoes. So I'm going to show you what these look like inside of these bins, but this is where I keep a lot of the stuff that is pre-owned that I have for sale. And I also keep a spreadsheet that shows where each item is so I know exactly where to go when it sells. So for example, if it was WT number 20 and it shows that it's in WT number 2, I'm going to go straight to WT number 2 and pull out number 20 package. Top bin, as you can see, I just simply mark it WT 17. WT50, can you see that? And this one says WT34, 39. This one is WT47. Yeah, I could put them in order, but I don't really have time for that. I just put them WT46, you know, and then it corresponds with the spreadsheet. So I can... This is another bin that I keep that has mailing supplies in it. Um, I have a small bag of little miniature bubble wrap. So this whole bin here is filled with all different size bubble mailers, poly mailers, even United States Postal Service mailers, um, just about everything. I save all the labels to peel off the labels or cover up the labels with a blank shipping label or a piece of white paper with shipping tape. Obviously, you don't want any of your barcodes to show through your current shipping label or things would not go well at the post office. And at the back here, I have some plastic bags that for some reason I've held on to. I'm sure one day they're going to come in handy, but um, I also wanted to show you this bag right here. This bag is full of plastic, large plastic bags that came on various items that I purchased. So if I ever needed a large plastic bag to wrap something in, I keep those too. I just shove them in the same bin. And so here is a box of labels that I use all the time, especially these fragile labels. If you ever have anything you're shipping that could be potentially glass, even though you've wrapped it up really carefully, Make sure you put a roll of these stickers. They're really cheap. As you can tell, I bought them in bulk, and I've been using these for years. But put your fragile stickers on every single side of the box. Um, these priority mail labels are for when you're using USPS priority mail shipping labels. And by identifying these labels, by putting them all around your box, I believe you definitely get uh, priority handling, even though you might already have a priority mail label. I believe sticking these labels around your package might get your package moved just a little faster. I'm just a strong believer in that. They they give these away for free on their website, and um, so it can't hurt to label them. So potentially, you know, this is their biggest product is their priority mail um, product, and so it can't hurt. I've been using these for years. Like I said, you can order these off of their website for free. Then I have these uh, choking warning hazard labels. Uh, I put these on items on any kind of packaging that wouldn't already have that message on the packaging. So I have a roll of these on hand in case I need them. Obviously, you know what this is. I always have a roll of packing tape pretty much in almost every room of my house. You may not see it right away because it's probably stored somewhere, but I always like to have packing tape at my arm's reach at a moment's notice. So you definitely need that. Okay, so obviously you would need a shipping scale somewhere in your house. And I've talked about the shipping scale before. This is a 15-pound scale that I got off of Amazon years ago, and it's still working great. Even though my husband just picked me up a brand new scale that I've yet to show you and talk to you about, this is the one that I'm still using, and um, it works really good for anything 15 pounds and under. And typically, if, if, if anything is 15 pounds or over, I would just get on my regular scale and weigh myself and then deduct myself with the package weight, if you know what I mean. Um, so, just so you'll see, you just turn on this button right here. And my pig weighs 5.5 ounces. Okay, so the next thing you would need to keep on hand for sure is mailing labels. Um, you can always print out a shipping label on regular piece of paper and tape around it, but you can't have tape going across any barcodes. And um, 
So just so you know, you can put tape in certain places around the label, but I prefer to use these shipping labels. They have two labels on each side. And in my particular printer, you just put them inside your uh, where you put your paper face down and the printing labels print out perfectly. Uh, another thing I have here, you probably can't see too well, but um, these would be labels if you're printing out um, fulfillment by Amazon and Amazon shipping labels to ship your fulfilled by Amazon packages off to the logistics center. Um, those are labels you would want to keep on hand. And these are address labels or product labels that you would use to... Uh, if you were shipping products off to Amazon, uh, 30 labels per page. Another thing that I've been using for years is these long sheets of tissue paper here. These sheets are, I believe, 20 by 30. And I use these sheets of paper to wrap up, um, especially like clothing items or anything you want packaged in tissue. They come in packages, I believe, of a thousand. I think I originally got these off of Uline Shipping Company, but I'm sure they sell these uh, everywhere. In fact, I know you can buy them in different colors. So if you prefer to wrap your products in different color paper as opposed to white tissue paper, you can definitely do that. Um, the thing I like about this is you can fold it in half and then you can fold it again and it fits nicely when you're trying to store it with all your other items. These mailers right here are some of the most popular items I use to ship clothing in. They're 10 by 13 and um, I would typically just put the piece of clothing in this and I would obviously fold it over and then weigh it and more than likely usually uh, one piece of clothing if it's not a pair of jeans is usually first class shipping. If it's a pair of jeans then uh, you might as well step up to United States uh, Post Office uh, priority shipping package. Now, if you're selling products that may potentially leak, or if you're selling products for Amazon, fulfilled by Amazon, or fulfilled by merchant, um, you would want to keep on hand poly mailers. And I have multiple sizes here. I have 10 by 13. I have 11 by 16. 11 by 6.5. 10 by 13, which I have a lot of. 8 by 12s, 9 by 14, and notice that these don't have the choking label warning like these do, so that's why I have those labels, because if I were to ship something in these, I would need to stick that label on the outside of that particular package. I um, also have 12 by 15.5, and I have these huge 19.26 inch ones, which would be good for um, like toys, especially. These smaller bags right here could be perfect for jewelry items that you might sell online or anything that's small that requires a small package. As you can see, they're very tiny bags. Okay, these priority mail mailers are free from USPS.com. I forgot the bulk amount that you can order them in, but they're free. And these are good for anything over a pound or I say a pound and over, perfect for like jeans if you sold a pair of jeans because jeans are obviously going to be over a pound. And they're waterproof. And as you can see, there's party mail stamped inside. So you're really not supposed to use it for anything but party mail. You couldn't use this for FedEx or UPS, obviously. Um, but you just affix the shipping label right here and peel off this tape. And basically, it's perfect for anything that will fit in it. And you can fit a large... Um, group of items in here like let's say you had four or five t-shirts that you were selling as a lot or two pairs of jeans or a pair of jeans a hat and a scarf whatever you want to do these are perfect for and like I said they're free I've used thousands of these mailers over the years in fact I'm getting really low and I need to get online and order some more but that just about wraps up everything you need I didn't show you a pair of scissors and I didn't show you a measuring tape, but those are two more items that you would definitely want to have in your shipping arsenal. So the moral of the story is, with all my packing materials I've shown you here today, always save any kind of packing materials that you get from making purchases, regardless of what the box says, because you can always wrap it up in shipping paper. I have a couple rolls of shipping paper like this that I ordered years ago, and it has come in handy if you needed to ship a box and it had something on it that you didn't want. Um... 
I don't know, sometimes people ship things in boxes that say all kinds of crazy stuff, but if you needed shipping paper, they have it in different thicknesses, and I have two rolls of this. It has come in handy over the years, and um, I don't suggest that you have to have it in your shipping pack or your shipping supplies, but I definitely would suggest that it has come in handy. So if you ever needed to cover something up in order to ship it, this is what you would get. You'd get a roll like this. And see? That's how it comes. And you can buy you can buy devices where this would hook on to so you can just tear it off. And I know a lot of people are are full scale shippers that have that kind of equipment, but it's never been necessary for me. I just take the roll and cut what I need off of it and put it back in the garage. Okay, so these are the last things that I'm going to talk to you about in terms of things that you should keep on hand for your shipping. Uh, if you're doing retail arbitrage where you go out and purchase new items and uh, that are on closeout for sale or clearance and you're going to make a profit by reselling those items for a higher price, then you would want one of these, which is called a Scotty Peeler. I didn't even know what one of these were until I found it online on one of my biggest fans videos she was talking about it and I'm glad that I saw her video it says blade must slide flat on surface under label see instructions on box this is a sharp blade and let me tell you I thought I was being careful for the first time I ever used it and I cut myself and that cut hurt for like weeks as you can see this blade is like a razor blade on all three corners but it goes up underneath the label and helps you peel off labels from boxes. I wouldn't recommend it uh, for some paper type products, but for products where you're getting the labels off of maybe plastic areas or areas that are um, thin material that are not made out of paper, I would recommend to definitely get a Scotty peeler because when you ship those products off, you don't want your customers to see the great deals that you got the product for. Um, also some Goo Gone here. Goo Gone helps you get um, definitely some labels off. If you still have some adhesive left over after you've taken your labels off, you always want to wipe with a cotton ball or maybe a um, Q-tip. And a hair dryer. You would probably want to use this on a low heat setting because you don't want to damage the material you're trying to sell or the product you're trying to sell. And I would use this to get off um, items just like you would use Goo Gone. It's, use it at your discretion. I'm not going to recommend you do anything in particular because I don't want you to ruin your product, but it's definitely something you need to be careful about. So Scotty Peeler, Goo Gone, and a hair dryer will help prep you to get your price tags off of your products so your customers don't see what the great deal you got. <music>